So I'm currently editing this episode that you're about to watch and I've seen a couple of comments from people who wish that these videos were horizontal instead of vertical. I do too, but I already shot the whole season one of homeschool. I shot it on my phone and they're all vertical. So I'm gonna try adding this blurred background to this one and just see if that makes it a better viewing experience for you. I really hope you can still get plenty of value out of the tips that I'm sharing in these. And if you do get a lot out of this series, then I will aim to make a season two and I promise to shoot that horizontally. Okay, enjoy. Welcome back to Homeschool. This is a series to help you develop your personal style at home. And today's episode is going to help you be more decisive when you're designing your home. So in episodes seven and eight, I talked about listing out your needs for a room. And I still think that this is where any project should really start. It's a pragmatic way to make decisions about what you need to have in the room, what you're gonna get rid of, how you're gonna prioritize your budget, and all of that is really driven by your needs. So there's a lot of clarity in that. But once you've done that, the next step is to figure out the look and feel of the room. And I think that that is a bit harder for people because it's a lot more open-ended. So one tool that you can use to help narrow down your personal style is to take the style quiz that I created and I'll link that in the description. But another way to make this even more personal to you is to ask yourself, what is the story that I want to tell in my home? So maybe you've just moved into a new home with a partner, and so you want this to be a space that represents the two of you, and the story that you wanna tell might be one about the life that you're creating and the home that you're building together. In that case, I would think about a place that you both love. So maybe it's a trip to a city or a country that inspires you or a hotel that you've stayed at or a movie that you both love that you can pull design elements from. So I think that it's really about finding that common shared experience that you both love because inevitably there will be things that you disagree on. In almost all cases, couples come into this with two different styles, but then it becomes less about whether it's your taste or their taste is good or bad because that's an impossible argument to win. And instead it's more about, does this get us one step closer to the look and the feel that we both want for this room? And because you started with determining both of your needs for the room, it's really helping to create a space that satisfies both of you. Now, if you're someone who is moving into a home on your own, maybe this is your first time living without roommates, or maybe you've ended a relationship, or maybe it's your first time making all the decisions and really investing in pieces for yourself, then maybe the story that you wanna tell is more about coming into yourself and expressing your unique vision and celebrating your idiosyncrasies in a way that you couldn't when you were sharing a space with someone else. So that could mean committing to a really bold patterned wallpaper or choosing not to have a TV in your living room or having a green velvet sofa because green is your favorite color and this home is all about you. So that way, when you're trying to pick things out for your home, it's less about does this look good or does this look bad because there are a million things that could look good. And I think that's one of the harder things about being on Instagram or Pinterest. But when you're really grounding your decisions on your personal experiences, your feelings, your memories, then that's something that you can make decisions based on that have no right or wrong. So I use my holiday decorations as an example. I really wanted this to be something that feels personal and I didn't wanna just be buying things because that's what you're supposed to put up during the holidays. So I asked myself, what is the story that I want to tell? And this is my first time spending Christmas in my own home. It's also my first time spending Christmas in New York. So my first thought was Home Alone 2 and the fancy room service, breakfast in bed, and that magical Christmas morning in the Plaza Hotel. That was the feeling that I wanted to capture, but I've never stayed in the Plaza Hotel before, but I have had a magical hotel experience 
where this hotel was moody and it was full of velvets and everything was candlelit and there were a lot of burgundies which aren't really my style but i do love jewel tones and i love sapphire blues and golds and marigolds so i chose to pull together a mood board that had those colors and the materials like the velvet and the candlesticks and some things that feel a bit more luxe and fancy than what i normally have in my day-to-day -day life and i thought that that would give me the mood that i want for the holidays so now when i'm shopping it's really focused because i have this mood board and i used spoke to make it so if you're looking for a tool for making mood boards and kind of organizing your projects then I recommend spoke but it's just helpful so that now when I see someone else's pink Christmas tree I can love the way that it looks but know that it's not going to fit into the look and feel that I'm trying to create for my home and that's why I really love storytelling as a tool because you can't be right or wrong when it comes to your personal memories or your personal feelings. So I really hope that this way of thinking helps you to make some decisions in your home and I'll see you next week.